Hi there, dear Truth Warriors. Um, today I wanted to speak about uh, the fact that the narcissist lives in a constant state, in a chronic state of cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance is when a, a human being, when a person holds two conflicting beliefs at the same time. And this is what we also do as survivors of abuse is that we can see what's going around us on around us we see the abuse we see what is being done to us and yet we also believe that we can change the narcissist that if we stay a little longer if we play into their uh, demands that we can change them so this is also how we keep ourselves in a state of cognitive dissonance but the difference is that um, at some point when we are on our healing journey we can alter our um, external situations to fit our internal belief system. This is what we are capable of doing. The narcissist, however, is so fragmented that they cannot, um, um, they cannot bear to live. It, is, it, is, it provides them with such pain, emotional pain, that they cannot stand to look at the truth of who they are. So what a narcissist does is they perceive themselves, their inner world, this is how they perceive, them, perceive themselves, is to be superior, is to be highly intelligent, is to be um, perfection. And they look at the external world to confirm this within themselves. So as long as you are playing into their demands, as long as you are saying, yes, you are intelligent, yes, you are superior, yes, you are perfection, this is what, this is how they maintain their very fragile uh, identity. Because once you start challenging their beliefs, once you start saying to them, look, what you've just said to me, what you've just done to me, so you're holding up the mirror and you're challenging their belief system, this is what sends them into a state of rage. This is what um, then um, makes them give you the silent treatment because they cannot handle that level of truth that you are honestly showing to them. So with cognitive dissonance, to just give an example, say that you tell a lie about something, but fundamentally you know you are an, uh, an honest person this is when the conflict starts within your system. So you've told the lie, but you know that in your essence, you are truth, you are honest. This is what brings about the conflict within ourselves. The same as, for example, um, you know cognitively that eating healthy foods will improve your health, will uh, improve uh, your weight, it will improve um, your overall well-being. That is what you know cognitively, but then you continue to feed yourself with foods that are not healthy for you. This is also a state of cognitive dissonance, is that you are holding two conflicting beliefs at the same time. And this is what the narcissist does throughout their life. They have this perception of themselves and they need you to continue to confirm that uh, perception that they hold about themselves. This is the only way that they can maintain their very fragile identity. So um, the narcissist will experience severe dis-ease when you challenge their beliefs, when you say to them, I just don't agree with what you're saying, I don't agree with what you're doing. This is not the way to go about things. Be honest, be truthful. You know, you call them out. And this is something, of course, that I just said they cannot handle because the external, so the fuel that we are giving them, does not resonate with their internal way of um, perceiving themselves, their inner world. So when you alter your behavior, you know, when, when we as survivors go through this uh, state of cognitive dissonance, we get to a point where we realize that we have to alter our behavior to fit our uh, belief system. So if our belief system is, for example, let's take smoking as an example. Uh, the belief system is we know that smoking is not healthy 
but we continue to do it, so that keeps us in the state of cognitive dissonance. And then we get to a point where we alter our behavior, so we quit smoking. And you feel better, you look better, you can breathe more, and this is how we bring the external, so our behavior, into alignment with our internal belief system. This is what we are capable of doing as survivors. This is what any healthy person is capable of doing, is that we can alter that, we can ease up on the cognitive dissonance. And the narcissist is simply not willing to look at this. They are not willing to change it. So this is how we also, as survivors, say to ourselves, well, you know, I, uh, I realize that there's, we don't call it cognitive dissonance but, dissonance, but we realize that there are very many conflicting beliefs when we are in relationship with a narcissist. And what do we do as survivors? We take on that task of, or we take on the responsibility of trying to change the situation so we adapt to the narcissist's behavior. We uh, accommodate their behavior for years on end, we will do it in the hope that we can change what is really going on. So as I just said, we too as survivors live in that state of cognitive uh, dissonance. But the narcissist is in this chronic state. So the thing to realize is that, uh, to accept especially, is that you cannot change the narcissist. You cannot change their behavior um, what you can change is how much fuel you're giving them, giving them, how much you are playing in to their bad behavior, how much you are confirming their uh, uh, fragile identity. We get to make that choice because when we challenge, this is when the narcissist puts up the heat on the abuse because they feel that they need to be in control in order to maintain that state of cognitive dissonance. That's when they feel in control, when you are giving them fuel, when they can manipulate your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your actions. And when we can choose to break that control by stepping away, by disengaging, that is when you shatter their inner world. And that is the only way to go about it. It may sound cruel, but it is very healing for us. It needs to be done. Us as survivors need to make that decision to save ourselves and to honor ourselves as men and women because no one deserves to be mistreated and to be abused. So I hope that makes some sense. Just a very short video for today. Um, please share your thoughts. If you uh, find this video informative and you find that it helps, please share it and um, let's keep this community alive. I would like to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel of late for all your emails, keep them coming. I have a little bit more free time on my hands now, right now, so more able to make more videos and answer most of your emails. Take care of yourselves and have a wonderful Easter weekend. Keep safe, love to all of you.